<laughs> in mm -hmm. 2008, why did, why did Bitcoin come to fruition? Because we need a new system versus the old system. And we're sort of now, at, I feel, an, an inflection point again. You look, we're back in another economic crisis because of the mismanagement. The old systems don't work, right? And now we're trying to, oh, 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 we need the institutions to come into Bitcoin. And, oh, well, let's change these new systems that we built to fit to the old system so that the old guys can come into this new new platform. And it's like, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. Why should we do that? We're already more transparent. We're already more independent. We've all learned. All the people involved in crypto are true believers and are engaged and are knowledgeable about financial management, about how to tackle FOMO. Maybe not all of us. Sometimes still we all jump in on a specific project, but we all hold each other accountable. We know that we do our own research, verify, trust and verify, you know, sort of elements and things like that. So I'm 100% with you yeah. here. I'm 100% yeah. with you. Um, I think this is something we've seen maybe over the past five years or so in the crypto space. There have been like some kind of turn where um, crypto want kind of like to be like an extension of the traditional financial system more than yeah. build out and own thing. I think it's it's a huge mistake, uh, but it's going to have to get worse because it, before it gets better, I think. You know, like people, yeah. they don't quite realize that at, at this point in time, like there is something actually I was talking uh, with uh, with someone uh, Monday about that. Like we had a crypto discussion and we we're talking yeah. about the early, very early day of the cypherpunk movement. And when the you know yeah. white paper came out and, you know, no, say anything before 2013, you know, something like that. Yeah. And one thing that people really don't realize now is why, you know, at the time, like everybody wanted to be anonymous, including Satoshi Nakamoto, and it was like very, uh, very fishy by today's standard, right? And why people <laughs> were like that? Well, you got to realize that before Bitcoin, there have been numerous attempts at, exactly, there have been numerous attempts at creating <laughs> uh, non-government currencies and stuff like that. And all of them, they got like pretty, like real quick and real intense reaction from various authorities, like either government or yeah. central banks or whatnot. Uh, like people would get into a meeting at the central bank or at some government agency, like within a week of launching the project. And they would be telling them like, okay, you need to stop your stuff or you're going to jail. <laughs> Basically, that was what those meetings were boiling down to. And, and for some reason, this has not really happened with the current crypto ecosystem. And I think people have forgotten that. Yep. Um, but because people have forgotten that, they have started building their ecosystem in a way that is much more susceptible to this kind of attacks. Right? Like Bitcoin itself is very resilient to this kind of attacks. But most of the DeFi systems that are being built nowadays, for instance, are not at all resilient to... And we see that for uh, Tornado.cash, for instance, is a good recent example yeah. where uh, people build that system where basically you can send money to the system and it's going to send you back the same amount but to some other address. And because it's doing that with many people at the same time, it's very difficult to track whose money is who and it's a way to provide some privacy on the chain. Uh, but the people behind it uh, right now are in some legal trouble, even though they didn't do anything illegal okay. per se. But like the, the accusation behind, like, so the guy behind Tornado Cash is like, you know, is there is a court case going on, right? And we don't know yeah. it's going to pan yeah. out, but there is a court case going on. Mm. And what is being accused of is kind of like the equivalent the of... In Holland. Yeah, it's in Holland. And it's kind of the equivalent of involuntary manslaughter, but for, you know, financial stuff, right? It's like, okay, you didn't do anything wrong, but you built a system that have helped other people do something wrong. And, and you had a reasonable expectation that those people would do so. And therefore, we consider you maybe responsible. It's, it's going to depend on what, you know, the judge decides and how the case goes. But, like, potentially you are co-responsible for that because you provide them a tool that, that they use that help them. And um, I mean, I obviously don't agree with those kind of stuff, but you got to realize like this is 
<laughs> this is how the legacy system work and this is all they are going to get at you when you beat those kind of, of financial product. And we have forgotten that quite a bit. And as, as we welcome more and more of that world in, I think at some point it's going to bite us in the ass. Uh, because, you know, yeah, and you, you look at you look at that system. Yeah, go ahead, yeah I guess especially right now, there is an economic crisis and you don't know they're going to react. Right. Like there is high inflation stuff. And maybe like if a lot of people start going in crypto because of that, the government are going to be like, OK, we were totally everything that thing on the side because it was not so big and it was not so damageable to our own currency that we control. But maybe, you know, if many people are flocking to it because of inflation, we want to crack down on it. Like you never know. You never know if those people are going to react. Motives. Yeah. yeah.